Welcome back to Nickelodeon's Comic Corner Classics as Non Classics. This episode is 939 and double shot number 833. I have two Avenger trades. First up, it is Avengers World Volume 1 Empire. Yeah, Empire. Yeah, yeah, they replace E with AIM. Yep, this collects the first five issues of this series, Avengers World, along with material from all new Marvel Now Point One. Now, the the, the material from that is written by John Hickman, all the series stuff written by Nick Spencer. Yeah, pretty much this series starts off it pretty much in the aftermath of Infinity, investigating various things across the world. We have Captain America forming a deal with Maria Hill to basically work have the Avengers work alongside Shield. They go all over the world, basically make it make the Avengers go global. Of course, this book was actually referenced, believe it or not, pages of New Warriors, the first arc of the series. Yeah, because it's Avengers World now, so I have the Avengers all over the place. Yep, we have, let's see, you have a team, let's see, you have various different teams basically going over the place. Mm hmm Let's see. You have one team. Let's see if I can get to it. Comprised of Hyperion, Captain Marvel, and Thor. Yes, Thor. Where they go to some place, I think it's up in New York, and then you have one in Mandrapur. You have Mandrapur, you have, you have another team in Italy, comprised of Starbrand, Nightmask, Hawkeye, and Spider-Woman. This is, of course, Jessica Drew, Spider-Woman. And for some reason in this book, she's gone back to her classic look, even though she act well, actually, she actually stuck with this look for quite some time. Yeah, she took this look up until, like, I think it was just after the first arc of uh, Spider-Verse. Mm -hmm. We have another team comprised of Sunspot, Cannonball, and Cannonball's love interest, Smasher, where they go to AIM Island. Yeah, that's where they go, AIM Island. You have another team in freaking Mandraport, of all places, and the team is comprised of Shang-Chi, the Black Widow, Falcon, and Wolverine. I should point out that this is like a year before his death in 2014. We also have a guest star appearance by Gorgon. Doesn't do very much in the issue, but yeah. We also have appearance with a hand. And we also have Mandrapur being revealed as on top of the head of a freaking dragon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love what they do with this series. Basically, explore like the aspects, basically, Avengers going global and going all over the place. We also have the me smashing up briefly the messenger briefly, and yeah, by far really fantastic comic. I highly recommend it if you're fans of Avengers because yeah, this definitely feels like an Avengers book. It basically it's kind of partially an anthology book with, with basically a loose like that set of stories in a way, but it's all basically wrapped up by issue 14. I I have volume two, Ascension, but I don't have volume three yet. Which is basically I don't have three or four yet, which can last last couple of trades, the last couple of issues of the series. I guess book a nine point five out of ten. Yep, fantastic book. Too bad this book was canceled after twenty one issues. Yeah, they canceled this book. In this book, was right at, right before time runs out. Which I'm thinking that's a stupid idea because they end this book probably the Secret Wars and kind of like what you're not gonna bring this book back. Well, my only theory, the reason why they bring it back, because, well, this is basically an expansion that basically will have pages of Avengers. So basically, you have all these other Avengers, you got to do something with them. So this book is basically a compromise for that. And Avengers was also a good compromise for that as well. But that was canceled with Inhumanity, which came out not long after this. All right, next up is Avengers. This is Avengers Ultron Unleashed. This collects issues 89, 91, Avengers West Coast, at the annual, and the four-ish miniseries of The Vision. The West Coast Avengers issues are written by Roy and Dan Thomas. Bob Harris does The Vision issues. This, of course, is the first volume for Vision. And Vision looks like this. Yeah, this is kind of, well, his third look he's had. His current look is a little bit different, but his, it's, this is kind of like his current look in a way. Yeah. Now, if you just pick this trade, and you're familiar with Ultron, like, okay, you have Ultron appearing here, apparently he's kept in the vault, yeah, Ultron has been destroyed many times over the years, he's not like the way he was in the films, where he's like, destroyed, he doesn't come back, in the comics, he's come back frequently over the years, 
And it makes sense that Roy Thomas writes The Return of Ultron here because he created Ultron. But I got there was something about the last issue I will talk about in a minute when it comes to Brian Michael Bendis and how he recons the issue. Yep. Hank Pym shows up in here and he shows up toward the end. He kind of goes back to his giant man look. Yep, he goes back to getting, going at being retirement for so long. Yeah, I thought most of the 80s he was basically retired. And he acted as a scientific advisor to the Avengers. Why the heck not? Mm -hmm. We also have Mockingbird kidnapped and have brain parents be used to make an, a female android meant to be Ultron's wife. I believe it's the second one. Actually, the third. Yeah, it's second female android that Ultron has built. He's built like three of them. And plus, he built the Vision, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yep. Of course, you read this like, why is Vision white? Well, that actually was explained in the storyline Vision Quest done by John Byrne. He's the one who did that to him, and like, as soon as the series is over, he goes back to this look. Now, as for why they threw in the Vision miniseries in here, my, my here's my personal theory, because, well, why not? Where is he going to put this miniseries in a trade? You can't put it in his own standalone trade. So, why not put it in here? Even though it came out after these issues came out. Yeah, these issues came out a period of... 1992 to 1995. Yep. That's pretty much when these issues came out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's the Vision miniseries? Well, it's basically the Vision act like a PI. Yep. And it's basically a crime noir type miniseries, but it's really good. Though, it's it's strange thing is, they have Ultra up here, and he's not a villain in the miniseries. No, he's like, he acts like a supporting character. They also have at one point where, believe it or not, Ultra, not Vision, Ultra, Vision has sex with Jocasta. I'm not kidding. And Jocasta is written like a femme fatale from the 40s. I have no idea why, but yeah. And, of course, Vision is a private eye in this miniseries. It is one of the most oddest things Marvel has done with the Vision. But it was interesting. I found the book to be pretty interesting as well. Mm -hmm. Now, my personal theory of why Marvel decided to release these issues in trade, because Ultron appeared at Age of Ultron. This book came out roughly in 2015, which is the same year that, Vi that well, Ultron appeared in movies. I would think that Marvel would do, like, an Avengers vs. Ultron trade, where they collect like all the times Avengers have fought Ultron, which has been many times over the years. Yep. But before I get to now, I'm gonna get this book roughly a 9.5. I think it's really good. Now the book itself sadly will be canceled like within like 11 issues after this. But there is something about issue 91 I should talk about. Yeah, it was later retconned by Brian McAbendis that the that the Maki Rush show up in this in the final issue of this three-part storyline. Was not Mockingbird. Yeah, it was retconned to being a scroll. Yep, a scroll. And this scroll was killed off in issue 100. Now, the following the following issues were collected in the trade. In the Death of Mockingbird trade, which collected issues 92 to 100 and issue 102. One of them skipped over because that was, that was part of a story like a Blood Ties. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this was pretty good. It's, yeah, for get this, a trade basically originally with twenty five dollars. I got this for six bucks at Ollie's. As for the Avengers World, originally sold for probably a little bit more than this. Basically, it's, I got it for like four bucks, and this book was sold for if I can get the thing off here. Sixteen ninety nine. That's how much the thing originally cost. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so that's it for this particular view. I I have some more videos coming today, but I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it after I upload these three, this one plus the other two videos. I have roughly about three movie reviews to do, basically three Star Trek films, a one more comic corner, one more and two more interviews. Roughly about six more videos left to do today. Mm-hmm. But until I see you next video, bye.